Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're making creamed spinach. So to start with, we are going to take at least a pound of fresh baby spinach and we're going to actually remove the stems. Now, when you're going through this, there's a lot here for a pound and it's going to take a minute to get through, but take off at least the larger parts of the stems because some of these have really thick stems, some do not. The smaller ones will cook through as you're using them in the pot, but you kind of want to take off the bigger parts because you don't want the crunchy, hard piece of stem when you're making your spinach. So you're going to have to go through all of them once you empty them out into your counter and just actually remove them all. And then we're going to put them into a pot of hot water so you're going to bring it up to almost a boil turn it off and then we're going to drop the spinach in because we're basically blanching these and then we're going to take them after 30 seconds of sitting in the hot water take them to the sink put them in a colander and rinse them with cold water to stop the cooking process so get all of yours in and give them that 30 seconds because they will start to soften up just from being in this hot water and as you can see, I have something that I can push them down in with, but also it's gonna help me scoot them out later without having to pull out all the hot water with them. So once you get them blanched and everything and you're ready to go to your next step, you're gonna need a rather large skillet, which in this skillet, we are going to put in two tablespoons of olive oil and at least a medium onion that has been cut up into smaller pieces because we want to actually bring up the temperature on this pan and cook the onions before we add anything else to it. So basically, you're gonna have medium high heat and you're gonna cook these onions for anywhere from three to four minutes until they're softened and become kind of translucent. So I suggest mixing them through the olive oil, get them all coated in the oil itself and keep turning them around, moving them around your pan, make sure the larger pieces are broken up to get them to start cooking. Now as you're cooking this, you're going to notice when you get to three and a half, four minutes that they are very translucent because they're not going to be as white. They're going to start to turn and it'll be very obvious that you're at the point where they are cooked through. And it's important to get these completely cooked before you go to your next step of cooking which is actually gonna be some minced garlic going in here. But we really want the onions done first because if you put the garlic in too early, then you're gonna cook it to a point to where it doesn't taste great. It's just gonna be mushy, disgusting. So what you really wanna do, get the onions done and then we go to the garlic after. So as I said, it's three to four minutes, but if you watch your onions, you can tell when they're changing and you're gonna know when they are what you want them to be as far as translucency and everything being cooked through. But please continue, keep stirring these, mix them up, move them around in the oil because that is going to help them cook. Now the good thing is as your temperature comes up in your pan and the oil starts to sizzle, it's going to really cook through these onions very well. Just make sure that you keep all the onions coated with the oil while it's doing this. So after a couple of minutes, make sure you stir and flip over the onions so that way you're going to get all of them cooked through, even some that are on top of other pieces. You're going to stir it up to a point where they're going to thoroughly cook through. And now we are going to go ahead and add our garlic to this. So you're going to need at least four cloves of garlic that have been minced. And once you get them in here, the garlic only has to cook probably about 30 seconds or so. You're going to start to smell it as it's getting aromatic and that means that it is cooking through. And once you get to that 30 second marker and all, you're going to need to have a tablespoon of flour because we're going to add this to the pan so that way we can mix it through with 
the oil, the onions, and the garlic and start the process of where we're going to get ready to make the cream sauce for the spinach. So once your flour is in, you're going to want to cook it for at least two minutes. That's going to take down the taste of the flour a bit, but it's also going to have it a time for you can mix it with the oil, the onions, the garlic, and make sure that everything mixes together. Once we get this completely mixed through at the two minute marker, we are going to add in a half a cup of milk. And that's what's going to actually make the whole creamy sauce that's going to be through our spinach. So when you go to add in your milk to this, you're going to want to put it in a little at a time to where you use like a portion of it, start mixing it through and then keep adding and adding until you actually get it completely in because you want it to mix through with whatever else you have in the pan. So, you know, you could even pour in half of it and then come back and pour it a little bit more and then a little bit more until you actually get it worked in. Because the whole thing is kind of like when you make gravy, you have to do it in a little bit of stages so that way it doesn't clump up and turn really harsh and stuck together on you where you have to keep stirring forever to get it broken up. So anyway, when you get this in and you have your milk in there, you're going to want to actually mix this completely to make sure everything is working through and it's kind of making a gravy in this. And once we get it all mixed through, we're going to end up adding our spinach into it. And once you get that in, you're going to want to cook this for several minutes past time to actually get everything in. So you're going to keep stirring it, mixing it through and doing everything as far as like mixing the spinach into the milk, into all of the vegetables that's already in here to actually get it mixed properly. And it does take a few minutes. I would cook this anywhere from five to 10 minutes to actually make sure that the spinach is one hot, but everything has been incorporated in. And at this point here, you can add in flavoring. Like if you want salt and pepper, you can do that to taste. Um, I probably would use about a half a teaspoon of each just to give this some flavor. Um, but continuously stir the whole time while this is cooking for the last few minutes to get it all incorporated. Because as you see, as I'm stirring mine in, it is mixing together and it will take a few minutes to get it completely stirred through to where this is kind of combined together and it actually absorbs into the spinach. Now, one thing about this that you can add, and I do add this, I used about a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese once mine was cooked completely through. And I sprinkle it over the top and let it sit for a while to incorporate. You don't have to do that. It's all in your choice as if you want to use it or not. I like it that way, but it doesn't mean you want the cheese on it. You can just go straight out with what it is. Um, the whole idea of this is to make sure that when you serve this, it's hot and the cheese will be on top of it unless you mix it through. It's your choice, but it just has a really good taste with the cheese, I think, but it's your choice. Now, if you didn't like your spinach uh, the way I put it in here in whole leaf, you could have chopped it up. I prefer to leave it like this because as you cook it, it does actually pull together, shrivel up, and it's going to get smaller anyway. So I kind of like it completely through. So as you can see, I'm adding salt and pepper to mine at this point. And then once this gets stirred up, I will add my cheese in, which I said was a fourth a cup of Parmesan. So, and once it's done, you basically are finished. You just basically want to let this sit, kind of absorb the flavors that you've added to it, and you're pretty much finished. But as I said before, once you put the cheese on, just let it sit for a couple of minutes to absorb the cheese and kind of give it a flavor. So as you can see, the actual sauce is at being absorbed right into the spinach as I'm stirring it there.
and this is my Parmesan cheese going on top. Like I said, I used about a fourth of a cup. If you don't use it, you don't have to. You could add more or less. It's your choice. And you are done at this point after letting it sit for a couple minutes. And when it's done and on your plate, it will look something like this. And it really is a treat to eat. So I hope you like this. And if you like this or my other videos, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested, I have a cookbook which is available on Amazon and on bookstores worldwide. Have a great day.